one live. He never says he never says two or one. I don't think he knows those numbers. I think he only knows five, four, and three. No, no, he edits it out in post. Oh, got it. It's amazing. We do a lot of editing in post here. Hey everyone. Hey. Uh, I'm Nathan Stewart. This is uh, my co-host Kate Welch, uh, and uh, we're doing our uh, our fireside chat. I was looking at Pelham, not the camera. We're doing our fireside chat. It's Pelham, the first Friday. We're doing our fireside chat, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pelham. And Pelham's like, I know. What do you who do you think's been working their ass off all morning for this? It's me. Um, all right. So I uh, saw a couple people in the chat. Uh, definitely saw uh, uh, Lauren in there. Saw Lee in there. Um, saw a couple other folks, uh, so welcome everyone. I'm always pleasantly surprised when you guys actually uh, show up. Um, I don't know if you know this, Kate, but um, I give away a lot of swag and usually spoil some stuff on this one. That's why people come watch. I thought these presents were for me. Oh, so, really? Uh, I guess I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we uh, we're gonna do things a little different uh, this week because um, because Kate, as many of you guys know, is one of our newest wizards. Um, with that said, how long have you been here now? Two months and one day. Two months and one day, but yeah. who's counting? <laughs> No, it was because Mike said yesterday on Twitter, he was like, Kate's been here about three months. I was like, nah, man, two months. Two no, months. Mike, it just feels it like just an eternity feels, when I'm here. It just feels like forever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to do it a little different because because um, Kate joined the team a little while ago, and she's been an awesome addition to the team, and I, uh, I love having her. Um, but I wanted to get her some screen time because we purposely throttled her a little from... Being uh, being on the live shows and doing any kind of gaming on the Twitch channel because we yep. want to let you drink from the fire hose of uh, you know the lore yep. uh, fire hose for a while and not uh, not worry about it and get you acclimated. So now you're two months in one day. So <laughs> gloves are off. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I was told not to say anything um, that was overly sexual. When? <laughs> Oh, it was actually yesterday. Oh, I meant I I uh, was I had an, uh, the interviews Todd Kenrick was in doing yeah. interviews for D and D Beyond, and I started to describe what it's like to get new players to play Dungeons and Dragons and and how how I can make that an appealing experience. And the way I described it, I was just like, you know, make sure that they know everything is cool and as long as everyone's having a good time and just to come to the table with an open mind. Which I guess is also how you would invite people to an orgy. <laughs> I was going to say, do you have safe words? Uh, how does this work? Um, was like, here are the boundaries, it. just so we're on the same page. You know, as long as you're cool, I'm cool. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. All right. Well, that's telling. I've never actually been to an orgy, and I didn't get the rules, so good to know. Um, all right. So you've been here for uh, you've been here for two months and one day. So the gloves are off. But uh, I did tell everyone and. I think that by now people, you guys know that I um, I exaggerate a lot. I, I say some things just to, you know to kind of storytell and make fun. And so I said, you know, hey, Kate hasn't been media trained yet, so she's going to say whatever. You haven't though, right? You're media trained next week. Sure, haven't been. Nope. Is it next? Uh, it's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. So I got to get all of it because at this point I can say stuff and then be like, oops. Did I say that? I wasn't media trained. Yeah, <laughs> Not but my fault. But Tito was trying to get it sooner. I think he was trying to get it before we uh, did this chat, but alas, he has not. Whoops. So uh, if she says anything wrong, we'll blame Tito. Um, that's right. Hashtag blame Tito. Uh, it's pronounced Jith Yankee. I think it is the is the big one. I want to get out there before they media train me. <laughs> Jith Yankee. <laughs> Yes, I've heard that. I've heard the animated GIF Yankee. It is GIF Sarai. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Just to continue that GIF GIF uh, thing. Exactly. I got you. I see where you're going. I'm in. Uh, okay, so I, I do have a serious question about your two months and one day. Okay. Um, is it what you'd expected so far? No, uh, but in the best way. I, I thought I was... T so my background is, is video games, right? It's not Mine tabletop. Too. So Yeah, exactly. So I didn't... I, I thought... Uh, it was going to be terrifying, and the amount of work is kind of terrifying. Like, the, <laughs> all right, we are doing it right then. <laughs> the pace at which things are produced here, because um, in games, the life cycle of a product is years sometimes, especially the games that I've been on. But here, I mean, we're cranking out products we're shipping every few months, yeah. um, and so it's it's a totally different kind of like pace of of working. Um, but I think the biggest surprise has just been how patient and understanding and reasonable all the expectations are. Particularly, and I, I keep saying this 
where he will probably hear it, but particularly Jeremy has been Jeremy Crawford. Jeremy, the Jeremy Crawford, the, the one and only. I know, wow. I know. But he has set me up every step of the way. Has been like, here are the easy victories we're going to get uh, you here in the, the very first few weeks, and then here are the expectations in six months, and then here's when you're going to be leading your own project. Um, and he's, he, I have all those milestones set up for me, um, and I have. I've been, I've been getting early victories. I know I have long-term goals. Uh, when I pitch things, everyone is really excited to hear about them. I just feel extremely valued here, and that's not necessarily something that you get in a, a heavy design environment. So um, I just feel really lucky, and it is actually the best job in the world. Turns nice. Out. All right. Well, that's good. And. Uh, <laughs> The return policy is over, so you have to stay now. Yep, yep. sixty days. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, so I did want to um, I did want to lean into some of the fun stuff though before we got there because uh, you are one of our newest employees and you did talk about this kind of design environment. So you had a pretty solid resume, as I remember. Pelm, can we show everyone her resume? <laughs> oh do you, my do you, god! Do you remember what that note says up there? <laughs> Do you, do you remember that note? Yeah, I remember that note. Yeah, so yeah, pretty pretty solid, pretty solid resume there. Um, but uh, oh, but I would like shit. to point out you left off a couple things on your resume. So um, actually, uh, <laughs> don't go to the next image yet, uh, Pelham. But uh, but you noticed there we had a couple things. So tell me about this Rocketeer uh, thing because that wasn't on your resume, but that seems relevant for what we're doing. Uh, so I love the Rocketeer. It's, it was the I was 90, it was 91, so I was like five, six years old when it came out. Um, and it was awesome. And it's kind of like, I don't know if the last time any of you watched The Rocketeer, um, but it was Disney, and it is brutal. Disney, it is a Disney movie where, like, they blow up Nazis on a Zeppelin, and they're just capping them left and right. It's really it's really kind of, like, shocking that, that this was a Disney movie. Do you know um, all Disney movies are scary as hell? They all, first of all, the parents are going to die first thing. Yeah. Tragic accident. Yeah, for Oh, sure. and now you're homeless. Like, uh -huh. I mean, they go hardcore right away. I mean, they have cute, fuzzy graphics. So cool. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah some, some Disney movies, but this one is, it's, it's pretty brutal. It's, um... But they did it in, like, a soft sepia tone so it was Ooh, not that soft <laughs> uh, but it was the first movie where I ever saw God just plunge right into this the first movie I ever saw when I was a kid that was about murdering Nazis oh and that became a really big genre for me um, this became like Indiana Jones was yeah, my next one um, that was the next step. there's a lot there's a lot of good like just pounding the shit out of Nazis um, and then uh, the first tattoo, games I ever played was Wolfenstein yep yeah there you go um, and then I have a I ended up getting one of my first tattoos was a big rocketeer half sleeve um, nice. the, my dad's a pilot too and he's just a, like a sweet goofball so there was there's a some, Zeppelin like, pilot no oh. he's a fighter pilot oh. um, but yeah, so anyway, I just love the Rocketeer, and then um, a friend of mine gave me the helmet, and I was <sighs> like, I've got to, now I've got to do the whole costume. Yeah. So then I, I found uh, Batman, who uh, was in an incredible costume, and I got a picture with him, and yeah. There we go. Yeah, and then he took, after that picture, he, I was like, hey, can I get a picture with you? He was like, yes. You can, and then we took the picture, and he was like, "My name is Daniel." <laughs> or something. It was really sweet. I'm Batman. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm Daniel. I'm Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, there. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed on the picture. I think we can do a close up on this one, uh, Pelham. <laughs> but uh, you were a taxi driver for some time, right? Uh, or what is this? I'm. Oh, I'm really no. not sure what this image is. What? Uh, so. What is this? Well, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ask the crowd. I mean, do you guys think that this is a uh, an underground high end taxi service using stolen police cars? Um, B. She was an early adopter in the rideshare service classy coaches, but quit because, like Marisha Ray, she thinks sleeves are bullshit. <laughs> are bullshit. Uh, or C. She was originally cast in Fast and Furious Four, but Vin Diesel ultimately ended up winning in a in a in a high stakes D and D game. So what God. what is the real story behind oh, this picture? Oh jeez, those are all way better. Oh, I want to say it's C. I want to say it's C too. Oh my God. Um, I was. Uh, I was cast in a video game that was done by some local friends um, called Roundabout, and it's the uh, the company No Goblin. Uh, and they they were making this game, and they had cast a bunch of my friends as as bit parts, and I hadn't been involved in it. And then one day, the developer, the lead dev, 
messaged me and said, hey, we've decided that we want our main character to be female, played by a woman instead of a man, even though the character itself is um, androgynous. And we were hoping that you would want to do it. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I So wait, this was their pitch? We'd like you to be our androgynous taxi driver? Yes, yes. And you're like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't care, whatever. So we, we were in a soundstage, which is the same sound soundstage that we did the stream of Annihilation in uh, last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and they parked this uh, old police cruiser that they had bought at auction, and I sat in the front seat, and the dev sat in the back seat with a script, and he was like, okay, so now you need to, this is a, this game is a silent protagonist, by the way, I have zero speaking parts, but I'm on screen for like a ton of it. So he's like, okay, so now you're going to turn to the back seat, and you're going to look confused, but also determined, but also a little angry. <laughs> and so it's me. I didn't have a driver's license at this point either, and I didn't tell him that until it was far too late for him to recast me. Um, <laughs> and so it was me, like, in this in the front seat of this car and then I'd be like just like over and over six hours of that and then we made a really silly video game called roundabout nice. where I, I drive a revolving limousine. and I've heard ladies and gentlemen that it is on sale on Steam a lot so yeah. if you want to play roundabout on Steam you can get it for like a buck sixty yeah <laughs> it's really stupid none of the proceeds go to Kate but all of <laughs> no, the laughter will go I to got you paid Zero dollars. Zero, <laughs> well, in dollars, but in fun and memory. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then um, also, I think in the bottom one there, we had a nice picture of one of your other things. Also not on your resume, but uh, your alter ego is uh, Rosie B. Stinger, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, uh, my hero. I love yeah. her so much. I mean, like, this seems pretty relevant. I mean, she's kind of a D&D &D master. <laughs> um, what is she? She's a monk? She's, she's, she's a, a monk. Shadow monk. Shadow monk. Yep. Lightfoot halfling. She is now level six. Uh, oh. I keep sucking up to to Jerry, my DM, and like doing favors for him, and and like, hey, when am I gonna get allowed to level seven? And it hasn't happened yet. You want me to try and throw my weight around a little? Yeah, could you? Actually, I'm trying. I'm trying everything I can. Yeah. I, there was one day my husband was like, if you don't get level seven, you can't come home tonight. And wow. I, <laughs> and I did. Coffee's for closers. <laughs> exactly. Jeez. Exactly. That's your kind of household, huh? Also, I want to point out Rosie B. Stinger in reality was on my resume. <laughs> oh, it wasn't just a blank resume no. with a note that said, <laughs> no. I'm awesome, y'all know no. that, hire there me. Was definitely a line is like, I play the dice roller uh, Rosie V. Stinger on Acquisitions Inc. the C team. Nice. Okay, so that was on there. But you know another thing that you did leave off, uh, Video game champion. I think that you have the ultimate uh, joust high score. I don't oh, know no. if anyone knows that, but uh, yeah, she is a master joust player. Am I? Wow! Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I guess I must. That must have been one of my fugue states. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <coughs> no, this one uh, is a bit of a joke. The reason I put this up is because uh, I don't know if everyone or if anyone knows this, but you're buddies with Ernie Klein. Yeah, I am. Yeah. We, so he's uh, a he's a great dude. Um, we had uh, we we were super friends. Um, Back after he had written a movie called Fanboys, um, I had put some stupid video on the internet like a decade ago of just goofing off with my friends. Um, and he, he emailed me. He found this video and emailed me. He's like, this video was so funny. We should be best friends. And That's I, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try that with someone. I still have this email. And uh, I was like, okay. And yeah, I, let's be best friends. I, well, I Googled him. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And he had written this movie Fanboys. And so I was like, well... He's clearly a nerd. We probably have something in common. Um, Ready Player One came out. He yeah, was, you read that and you're like, no, he's definitely he's, a nerd. He's kind of a nerd. Um, and the uh, then he came to town with Will Wheaton on their book tour, and that was where he and I got to meet for the first time, and then we were just buds ever, ever since after that. Um, and he's he's a super good dude. One thing that people don't know about Ernie um, and, and Ready Player One is I, I always hear criticism that this is like pandering to nerds. But I think the thing that you have to know is that he never expected anyone to want to read that book. Oh. And he, he wrote it over 10 years, and it was like just a love letter to all the things that he likes. Like, that's just who he is. And he was like, I'm just going to write a book about this because this is stuff that I want to read about. Um, and then it ended up blowing up and then, of course, getting, yeah. getting controversial. And, uh, and then I think if you're, you know, of my age, and Ernie, I'm guessing, is my age because you read it, and I just like... I think I read the book in a day and a half because yeah. half the memories is there. Like, oh yeah, I remember that memory. Just yeah, like totally. super yeah. fast through it. So it was really fun. I mean, yeah, I mean it was, uh, you know, it was like a merchandising catalog of the '80s. It was, <laughs> you know, but that was that's fun, right? I mean, yeah. in terms of if you're in the right place to read the book and, and do the thing. Uh, and so I had a lot of fun with it. I thought yeah. it was great. Obviously, you know, the book has just a crap ton of D and D in it too. So totally. that doesn't. 
hurt when making I know, you like it. I know, it was really um, cool. And yeah. it was something my dad and I got to bond over too. Like we both loved that book for different reasons. Um, and so like we would read it and, and dad would text me. He's like, I'm reading Ready Player One again. And I was like, I'll start too. Oh. And we'll read it over two or three days. And then we're, we're like pointing out references yeah. to each other. So it, it holds a very special place in my heart. I have not seen the movie yet, but not for lack of it's desire. It's so fun. It's because I have a four and a half year old and um, it, uh, it doesn't have the necessary things for her to go see the movie like Disney characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or Minions. She's well, a big Minions fan. There might be some Disney characters in there. Yeah. Um, all right. So, all joking aside, on your resume and your uh, talents, you've uh, you've been here for two months and one day. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, in the early days, you were you were documenting it. Yes. Um, so uh, let's let's see what your early documentation was. Day one <laughs> oh, no. book. Day two book. <laughs> day three book, four book and monsters. Uh, okay, nice day five book. Okay, so those were the early days. That's true. Yeah, those are your early wins. Book, 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 book. Yep. Uh, this is hashtag baby wizard if you want to see your stuff. Yep. Now I also included up here an at she geek show because oh, yeah. you have two twitters. Well. She Geek Show used to be my old one. That was my, my YouTube show that I did like back in 2010 or so. Um, Before YouTube was even invented. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. really ahead of my time. Um, I, I got to, um, I went to Emerald City Comic Con for the first time in 20, 2009 or 2010. And I was like, nobody wants to talk to me about all the nerdy shit I saw. So I'll just make a YouTube video so that other people can find me and talk about nerdy stuff, uh, which was before I realized that YouTube was a horrible place. <laughs> Uh, and so I, but I did it for like two years because I loved it so much. I think the most I ever made off of it was uh, one time, one month, I made $400 on YouTube. And that was doing what? Just ads. Just getting ads and really? revenue. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the high point of my YouTube career, which is not a living wage. Um, Definitely not. In but Seattle. it was always part time. I was doing it uh, when I was working uh, at ArenaNet on Guild Wars 2. Really? Mm -hmm. You know who I got to uh, go and uh, hang out with, make friends with uh, not too long ago was Jeff Strain. Did you know him? Oh, yeah. So Jeff left before I joined ArenaNet, but I have gotten to meet him um, at PAX and through friends at Undead. What a joy that man is. And his game's pretty cool. And I think yeah. they're at PAX right now doing State of the K2. I'm sure they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, a really good friend of mine, uh, Brant Fitzgerald, who worked with me at Humongous Entertainment 20 years ago. Whoa! Um, he's uh, he's over there as an artist. And, uh, oh, cool. So Cool. Yeah, he was like, hey, yeah, you got to talk to Jeff. He's totally into D&D. &D. And then I saw, like, his, he's like a super Greyhawk nerd. And, yeah, yeah. It, he's, he is just a charismatic dude. Uh, everybody loves him. I, I wish I'd gotten to work with him more. Well, you never know. No, I do know. I'm going to die here. <laughs> Soon. Uh, hopefully not today. <laughs> and remember... Rule 14, <laughs> save on the death row. Uh, all right, well, uh, so yes, yeah, so your early days were uh, were marked by book, 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 book. book, 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 book. Um, it hasn't been all roses and, uh, and butterflies, though, because uh, I, uh, I do want to point out this image. Uh, so this oh, was a tough geez. day for you. I mean, this was rough. Yeah, I mean, uh, not every day that uh, Ari Levitch comes in and lays a <laughs> smackdown. What, what's going on? Like, how did you lose this one? What? What's going on here in the picture? Tell me the thoughts going through your head right there because that's tough. Well, so I knew going into this fight that I had it locked down. A hundred percent. No question. Because the Nightwalker had no spells and like two abilities that he could use against the Drow Matron Mother and I was just, I was full of potential. And then... Full of spit and vinegar. Shit didn't go my way. Yeah, the dice, the dice weren't rolling for you no, or what? No, the dice were rolling for me, but I don't know, a certain DM decided that he was going to give the Nightwalker some unforeseen advantages really to balance the playing field yeah Some well he gave bullshit. emmy a bunch of those cool little minion things and i think that totally turned the tide with her and absolutely yeah. yeah yeah no it was it was a really fun fight uh, and i learned that monsters are probably not designed to do battle against each other oh <laughs> it's, well i know a, a gal who can fix that for us hey. if I uh, oh, thanks, Pelham. Thanks for bringing yeah. that image right back up. Yeah. For us. Oh, and there's said dungeon master. Oh, so you're talking about Chris Lindsay? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. That guy's shady as hell. <laughs> yeah. No, he's definitely shady. Um, he knows it too. Yeah. He, he totally. Leans right he in. totally does. Um, speaking of which, um, I'm up on um, Monday uh, against yeah. uh, Kate. Yes, Kate Irwin. So that kind of sucks for me because obviously, I mean, she's the total. Fan favorite. I mean, she's going to be like the underdog fan favorite. Like she's the one they're going to be rooting for. She's going to destroy you. Yeah. So I have I have a plan. What is your plan? Well, I don't know if I'm going to win, but my plan is to try and win over the audience. I've got a really great sad backstory. 
uh, that I'm going to try and take it over with. So, uh, but let me um, let me show you guys who I'm be playing because someone asked me if I could do maybe a, a monster out of Mordekainen. So this is who I am um, playing next week. So yeah, that's right, the Astral Dreadnought, and uh, and I I uh, I don't know if you guys have ever. Uh, played as a uh, as a legendary creature like this and a gargantuan creature but uh i uh, i'm pretty new in dming so i've never really run a creature this high level and so yeah. i'm reading through all the stuff and i'm going oh my god that's amazing that's amazing mm -hmm. and i totally had a game plan and then chris Lindsay said oh yeah and because of the uh timing or whatnot you can't use any legendary actions and i'm like oh well yeah, I'm not exactly. even doing that anymore. Like, <laughs> exactly. forget about it. So I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, he, told, he told me the same. Yeah. Um, but this is one of the new ones in the, um, in the uh, Mordekainen's uh, Tome of Foes. Tome. I was told it's not Tomb of Foes. Yes. As, a, yeah. as it turns out, um, we printed it on the cover as Tome of Foes. <laughs> Tome of Foes. And if I look in my Tome of Foes right here, uh, and I go under... The designers, designers, additional design, Kim Mohan, Christopher per Kate Welch! This is your first book that you're in for the <laughs> What? It's my first book. Now, I think, and I've told Jeremy this, Jeremy, I, I was here for the last two weeks of production on Mordenkainen, so it was basically done. But those those two weeks when I was talking about book, 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 yeah. that was me reading this book over and over and over and over. We had like the print proofs out, yeah. and we had our red pens out, and we'd go through the whole book, mark it up, make those changes, print another one, go through the, the whole, whole book, book, mark it up. So that was that was just chugging through Morty's over and over and over again. Um, and then I made some, I got to make some cool design changes that were also really minor, but um, Jeremy incredibly graciously included me in the credits for it, oh. having having done very, very little of the actual work on Would it. Would you do me a favor? Would you sign my copy? <laughs> uh, uh, gladly. Gladly. <laughs> no problem. Um, all right. Um, well, while she is signing that, um, Helm, we have not done a giveaway. Oh. I think we should do our first giveaway. And do you know what we're going to give away, Pelham? Not clear. We're going to give away this signed copy of Mordecai. <gasps> oh, just just one today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. She's signing it. You're getting it. Oh, um, okay. So this signature's not going to make any sense then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys will know it's legit because you'll look and be like, she wrote it to Nathan. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to give away. So get in the raffle and do that. Uh, I was going to read the comments, but whenever we open the raffle, that's a uh, that's a bad way to do it. But I think this is like a month earlier, maybe even more. Like yeah, this comes out in May. End of May. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so somebody's getting an early copy, and uh, this is just one of the reasons why I hope you guys will come back on all the Fridays. Because as we know, I have a bit of a competition with uh, Mike's uh, Happy Fun Hour. But does he ever give you early copies of the latest book? Does he ever go a month early? Huh? 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 And look, there you go. That's how you'll know you got the right one, is that's the, uh, the Kate signature. And she wrote to me, you are banned from Photoshop, K, W, Little B, and Rosie. Um, well, that is a shame that I'm banned from Photoshop, because we have a couple more Photoshops. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so we talked about your early wins, the book, 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 your loss on the thing, but that's not your... That's not your real goal. Your real goal here is not to beat Ari and anything, but you've got some you've got some goals, right? You set oh, out yeah. a goal for yourself as a thing. Yeah. So uh, your number one goal <laughs> is that you would like to be the Aubrey Plaza of D and D. <laughs> Um, right, I mean, that's been stated. Yes, accurate, accurate. So I would like to God. know which one of these Aubrey Plazas you uh, most identify with. Okay, what is she saying in the last one? Uh, oh, what is she, can you read that poem? Uh, that she's saying, uh, it, it's actually perfectly suited for you. I forgot uh, exactly what it said. It's definitely the April Ludgate. I love games that turn people against each other. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> right? Okay. So you're Parks and Rec Aubrey. I'm Parks and Rec Aubrey for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, the Legion Aubrey there is crazy as hell. And then what's the uh, the top one that movie is? Um, Not sure. Uh, Danger. What is, oh, it's the one where the guy puts in the ad. He's going to time yeah, travel. Um, and safety, safety Not Guaranteed. Safety Not Guaranteed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I love that movie. She's there in that scene and she's like, <laughs> do you know where I can buy 
guns with big am and I forget what she's doing, but he's like, what? And she's like, well, I would know if your ad was more, and he's like, but it's a great story. It's like, a it's a really, really good, good movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love her. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if she's a D&D &D player, but I would like her to be. She could do it in a heartbeat. She yeah. would kick ass. Yeah, I feel like Aubrey, it. get at me. Seriously, right? Let's yeah, be, you guys can be BFFs. Guys. Yeah, you can do the Ernie Klein thing to her. We should totally be BFFs. <laughs> I'm um, legit. <laughs> all right, and I have one. Um, I have one last, not yet, poem. I have one last Photoshop, but I actually cannot take credit for this. This was no, all I did was crop this oh, uh, photo. But remember, I told you earlier that you'll find out who Lee is. Yes. Well, uh, I'm going to actually check off one of the goals on your goal list for the year. I think this is in people sources the goal, right? You wanted to have your very own pancake <laughs> made of you. Oh, this is Lee. Yeah! This is Lee. So Lee oh Goldberg, God. who, uh, by the way, do you guys know this? Like, let's say about six months ago, and I might be getting the, the time wrong. Lee, if you're still in the chat, you can correct me. But like six months ago, Lee was not into D&D. Really? Yeah. He uh, he started, he was uh, listening or watching Nerd Poker Podcast mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. started getting into it and was just like, this is amazing, this yeah. is awesome. And then somehow he and Joe McNeil got connected and he was like, have you seen Critical Role? Have you seen Forrest Gray? Have you been watching Ak Inc? And he's like, no, no, no. So he like powers through and watches them. He like totally like binge watches. I think he watched like all 112 episodes <laughs> Holy of shit. Critical Role and whatnot. And now he's playing, he's making pancakes left and right, he's doing all this stuff. Yeah, I've seen him make at least one round of C-Team Pancakes, yeah. which has been maybe some of our favorite fan art that we've Right? Done. So there. <laughs> so that's the last of my, uh, that's the last of my true Photoshop. Oh, Not to say that I so won't good. do more, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen your Tito's. Oh, my Tito stuff is legendary. Glorious. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the best. And I got some more in the hopper. Okay, good. Yeah, um, I, I took some pictures of them the other day. Uh, that was definitely for the uh, purposes of Photoshop. Oh. Um, yeah. I you mean, just you're just like creepily taking pictures of Greg. No, I came in and stood right at him, looked at him, took pictures. Yeah, I mean, he knew. He knew what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Is this your work? Oh yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely one of them. Yeah, here's the. Uh, oh my god! I snapped that picture because that's going to be something. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, that's for perfect. sure. Yeah, that's beautiful. You just, <clears throat> you just have to wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. What time do we got? We got 11:30. We're halfway through. We haven't really even given away anything. No. Um, I, I mean, except for a really cool autographed book. Oh. Well, there's <laughs> we that. Haven't given away yet? Oh, huh? We haven't, we haven't given away yet. Oh, is the raffle still open? It's still open. Okay. Oh. Well, can we close that one, so we and then we'll open a new one for like a several things and do that? Oh. Um, okay. Uh, so while t while Pelham is doing that, let me um, just talk about a couple things. Um, I know you guys like spoilers. I, I guess the Dreadnought was kind of a spoiler, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, we haven't shared that one before. you got to kind of freeze frame or whatever Yeah, it's actually not, you're not <clears> supposed <throat> to say it before the Morty's Mayhem. You're not supposed to talk about what monster you're playing, so. Oh. Just, uh, oh. just Mr. Rule Breaker over here. Well. Everybody knows you're a rebel now. Yeah, as, as this stream <laughs> knows, I, uh, I ask for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> um, but some of the other stuff on there. So, uh, I didn't really kind of put questions out there, although we did, uh, talk about you being on, on the stream a lot. I don't know if you got any questions thrown at you. Uh, I did get a lot of grief uh, last month for the no beard. So as you guys can tell, I got the beard back. Um, the beard is a good look. Yeah, I didn't want to disappoint uh, two, uh, two months in a row. <laughs> um, so that's cool. Uh, also, I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, there was some images that went out of uh, Clouth, our, uh, our crazy red dragon. Um, some images went out on the, uh, uh, on the Geekosphere uh, last couple of days. Uh, and so I just want to point out, that's real. Um, don't let Kate Irwin see it because I don't think that it's actually fully approved through the system yet. But I know those guys will work with it and they'll get it right. But we definitely are working with those guys to make some really cool high-end um, statues and stuff. So when you see that, that company's legit. They're totally working with us. They might have, uh, you know, jumped the gun a little bit on the sharing that image, but they are working with us and it is all legit. And I got the models right and everything. They just haven't, they're not 100% like through the thing, but I know they've got that to share. I know they've got some more stuff coming down the pipe. So check it out if you see the, the red clouds out there. Um, also, um, what else? Oh, I already talked. We already talked about my uh, my dreadnought uh, battle on uh, on Monday. Monday. That's um, four. Is it at four? I think it's at four. Four. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and if it's not, then in post, tell them just like beep out when I said four and put in the right, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, we can do that in post. Nice, in yeah. post. Yeah, I don't know what post is, um, <laughs> but we do that. Uh, okay, so oh, did we- cl shit, this clout is fucking sick. Yeah. Is this the one? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, unless you don't like awesome. No, I hate it. Yeah, I hate awesome. Oh my god. Yeah, but it's gonna be fully colored. I mean, like it's a nice high end collectible. I like that the the can of soup for scale. Oh, is that what that is? I thought Clouth just liked Campbell's soup. <coughs> okay. Um, Clouth for Campbell's soup. <laughs> so let's do this before we start another raffle. I do want to throw out some, a chance for some questions. So, uh, Mubot, Adam, no, not Mubot. Did we close the raffle yet? We opened a new one. We opened a new one. Ooh. Oh, son what's of a. This, what's this raffle for? Well, I don't know. We're gonna do a bunch of. Yeah. Uh, all right. Post production for Nathan. <laughs> um, lore questions for Raffle. Now, I don't like doing the questions because if you got a lag on the thing, then it doesn't work out. So everyone who's in the thing, you just put your Raffle thing in there, and you're you're gonna win. Who won the uh, Who won the book? Coco Rock. Korok. Coco. R O C. Coco Rock. Korok. Korok. Korok, Korok. the Destroyer. That's <laughs> um, Korok. You are not banned from Photoshop. Just this one me. is. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, then, since we got the raffle open now here, let's do this. Let's do four giveaways, uh, and then we'll close the raffle. But what are we going to give away, Kate? What do you want to give away here? Shoot. Okay. Well, I think we should give away... What are these things in plastic? They're, oh, my those gosh. Those are new. These are the new Monster Menage uh, 3 Icons of the Realms. This Whoa. is from our friends at WizKids. Um, they were nice enough to uh, to give us these. Um, now, what do we think? This is a this is like a whole little shrink wrap thing. This is eight <laughs> sets. Are we doing? That feels like. Let's spread the love a little bit more. What do we do? Let's do four four of the little boxes. So half a brick uh, per person. So we'll give away four sets of four minis. Is that cool? I'm looking at Pelham because he's the one who's going to make sure that we keep it honest. Uh, all right. So we're going to give four of those away to all the people that are in the raffle right now. Um, in here, but uh, Pelham, if it's not too much trouble, uh, if you flash up that other photo that I gave you, um, this is my latest play tester. She was play testing the, uh, oh. <laughs> the newest mini set. Uh, oh. So this, I took some of these home the other day, and she is a big fan. So uh, <laughs> she she did get the product for free. So we do have to actually mention that <laughs> her endorsement was not um, uncompensated. She she got the free product. She sponsored. But she, she sponsored. Yeah, this is an ad, not uh, you know not just free. <laughs> but she did uh, totally endorse the set. She loved it. So cool. Uh, and she also got an amazing pull on there. She got the uh, the awesome um, storm giant. Oh, uh, and she's was, a badass female yeah. storm giant in there. I was I was just admiring the art on the side of this for the the frost giant. Did you see a frost giant? Yeah, check that one out. Is that oh what she no, got? that's not the one she got. Oh, no, shit. she got okay. a badass. Uh, I forget what her name is. I think she was uh, one of the key villains in the Storm King's Thunder. She was the one who was like. Um, posing as a, or she might have been one of the daughters, but anyway, she's totally badass. Dude. She's got like magic coming out of her hands and stuff. And, nice. and my daughter, you know, she's she's four and a half and I wanted to grow up to be like a super powerful, smart, ambitious yeah. uh, woman because she's already on a good start and yes. also because that's what we do as parents, right? Yep, um, oh, yeah. So I love that when I take these things home that she can open this up and find, and like have just an awesome pole. Badass and women. Be like organic, but at the same time still like right on brand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but she loves the minis, so that's good for me because I'm gonna, you know, I'm getting her in there. Yes. Um, she also, I took her home a battle mat uh, or the adventurer's grid uh -huh. um, because uh, we were doing it and she was, uh, I said, oh, I got a, I got a, a grid, I got a battle grid. She goes, I want a battle grid. I'm like, you can have a battle grid. Wow, she's yeah. four and a half? Yeah, and she's got some dice. She's got, well, she takes all my dice. Battle grid. And she's got the My Little Pony dice set. She loves that one. That's my favorite one. Yeah. That was one of the gifts that Adam gave me when I first got here. Yeah. And he, he was like, do you have a My Little Pony dice set yet? And I was like, no, I don't. And they're beautiful. It's oh. like pink, pink pink dice with like gold glitter suspended Sparkled. throughout oh, it. No. Oh, they're so just nice. awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm raising my daughter to be a dungeon boss. Hell yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I don't necessarily want her to go into game design. No offense. Uh, just, you know, because... Excuse me? Uh, my dad is very proud of me. I don't know. I just, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I want her to... Um, Do something with her life. 
Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. I just, I want her. <laughs> you go in it for the love of the game, not Tom, for the money. are you hearing this shit? <laughs> you go in it for the love of the game, not the money. You know what I mean? And secretly, you oh, want your kid to yeah, like you... be able to provide for family needs. And... Right. You want her to be rich so you can retire early and yes. get taken care of. But I fear that she is totally leaning towards that side because every time we play games, and we have a lot of games in my house, believe it or not. Uh, I mean, the board game closet's full. Nice. Um, and so she always does alt rules. And so we're playing. Oh. So we're playing the game right now. She's like, okay, now the rules are, and we have to play it her way for the next round. And then now the rules are, and I'm like, yes, she's a game Damn. designer. Yeah. She's already a game designer. Already there. But Too if late. you ask her what she wants to be when she grows up, um, she wants to be a bone doctor Monday through Thursday uh, and then play Dungeons and Dragons on Fridays. Bone doctor? Yeah. Dude, that's an actual viable thing. Yeah, like, for real. I get paid to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> well, right, yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, that's actually, okay, that's not bad. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, oh, what a, what a killer. Yeah. She's awesome. Uh, so that's uh, that's my little uh, baby wizard. Uh, not so that's, baby a real, that's a real baby wizard you got there. Yeah. Oh. She's awesome. Don't let her uh, meet me. She'll. I was going to say you haven't met her yet, huh? I think <laughs> no. almost everyone's met her. I, I bring her in every now and then. She does some monster drawing. Uh, she had a meeting with uh, with uh, Jeremy, nice. uh, Emmy, and uh, Shauna. She doing some concept art for yeah, us. Yeah, doing some concept art. So that was cool. 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 Yeah. So that as was long good. as we pay her a fair rate, I mean, give her that piece. Uh, well, we we let her raid the candy jar up on the uh, fourth floor and. <laughs> ah, game design, man. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the free it's food. All about the free food. <laughs> uh, okay, did we close our raffle? We did. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go to some questions. Uh, oh. So, uh, so Twitch folks, uh, do you have any questions? First of all, do we have more than twelve people today? Twelve? Yeah. yeah. We have three hundred and fifty-one. Wow! That means the three hundred and thirty-nine of them are because you're here with me. Because I, my average is twelve. I seriously yeah. doubt it, so, sir. <laughs> so three hundred and thirty-nine are because I told them you were coming. Thanks, folks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Questions. Uh, which are players' handbook, Dungeon Master Guide, those three help you get started? Um, I don't know if that was a question for me. Do me a favor, guys, uh, folks, friends. Uh, if you're going to do a question, question, Kate, how is Sebastian settling in? Um, Sebastian. He, yeah, he's, he's doing great. Um, uh, there's a real... Uh, knit, crochet, amigurumi thing that Mazmataz made mm. for me. So I actually have a physical Sebastian sitting on my desk every single day to give me inspiration. Inspiration? Um, to give me adoration. <laughs> See, I'm better at it now. Yeah. Uh, you throw that at me on a live stage in front of a huge audience, my mind goes blank. Uh, really? Awful. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. The Sebastian thing is rough. But but to my credit, oh, I was surrounded oh. by wordsmiths. None of them could think of any words. Oh, oh. I'm breaking stuff. I'm breaking stuff. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies back. Do you need a text oh, from oh, Grandpa? Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's playing Hearthstone. Oh, oh. <laughs> Never mind. It's Hearthstone time. What, uh, what kind of meta are you running? <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, technical difficulties. Ladies and gentlemen, here, you go to the All right, questions. here we go. Um, Nathan... Any plans for the D and D team to come to the UK? Um, not this year. Um, however, I will say that that is uh, really high on our list uh, in general to uh, to get a lot more uh, active uh, in Europe and especially the UK. Definitely want to do a UK Games Expo. Um, Hell yeah. We've got uh, Martin over there who's a really good friend of the brand and uh, we kind of coordinate and he's been trying to help us get over there for a while. So I don't foresee it, other than Jeremy going to the castle. Oh, uh, that's France. Oh, is that France? I yes. thought that was in Ireland. Um, no. Okay, that's France. So in terms of Europe, other than Jeremy going to the castle um, this year, I don't think Y'all know about this fucking castle. <laughs> Stupid. You didn't get asked to the castle? No! Uh, I guess it happened before I was hired or whatever. I but didn't also, get asked to the castle either. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. I There's, got no pull. Go to dndinacastle.com. That's a thing? Yeah. That's the URL? Yeah. dndinacastle.com. And nice. it's all sold out, so like, don't get your hopes up about it. But they're doing a weekend of D&D &D in a beeping castle in France. Uh, a chateau, I suppose, chateau. If, you, if you want to be technical about no, it. No, I think it's a damn castle. I think it's a goddamn castle. Yeah. Uh, but I will say I would expect really that in 2019 we crack that in a meaningful way. So no promises, <laughs> oh, but uh, awesome. but I would see 2019 be the year where we can get a lot more like 
just something really meaningful and meaty and fun. And uh, definitely love our, our European fans. UK, Italians are crazy. Apparently Italians, Italians go nuts for yeah, D&D. Italians love, and Luca is huge. Uh, that's the comic book show that they do in Italy oh. that encompasses gaming and D&D. And I want to say they have like five million people. I don't know how many people. A lot of people show Five up. million people. Five million people. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, other questions. Oh, I got one. Random AK. Uh, question. Are you guys coming to San Diego Comic-Con this year? Mm. Um, am I allowed to spoil things? Can I, can I say stuff? Oh, you shouldn't. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, well, theoretically, no, it's theoretically, hypothetically, <laughs> you didn't hear this from me. But uh, we're not going to officially be at the San Diego Comic-Con convention. But... Fifth Street, which runs like the gas lamp district right there. Yeah, cool yeah, yeah. Stuff. We're doing a badass takeover. We got some friends that are going to help us do it. What? We're gonna do this is the first time I've stuff. heard about this. No one knows about it. I've been doing this secretly. Does Tito know? No. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Phelan's like shaking his head. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you didn't hear that from me. Don't spread that on the internet yet. Wait till <laughs> we officially announce it. Just. Uh, I, you know what? Next fireside chat. How about that? Next fireside, I will spill the actual beans on that. Well, now I gotta watch next fireside. Oh, like uh, yeah, that's Ugh. tough. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> ch ch um, okay. Uh, let's go to a couple of you. Look at the questions too. They go okay. these. Uh, now somebody did ask this. This is not just me being obnoxious. What Hearthstone deck are you running right now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I uh, I can't deck build. I'm awful at deck building, which yeah. is why I like the dungeon run so much. I just dungeon run over and over again. Do you do that? The Kobolds and Catacombs dungeon run? Oh, the one that's basically like D&D &D and, yeah. and, and magic crossover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you don't have to deck build. You just play against bosses and get more cards and treasures. Um, I, uh, I don't do it anymore. I beat it. Oh, I haven't beaten it. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, but I'm prepping um, because, um, because I don't know if you remember this. Were you at the company All Hands that we did last quarter? Or last uh, month? I can't remember. What happened? Uh, remember where Chris Cox was up on stage? No, I, I wasn't there. Oh, I you weren't there. there? No, I think it was during CT oh, or something. Oh, no, I think you got sick. Remember you... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah my you were two or three. Yeah, yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah. anyway, I got called out uh, in that. Oh! Yeah, by Chris Cox up on stage. What happened? Um, and they he basically was talking about Magic Arena. Uh-huh, uh -huh. uh, And he's like, and maybe, maybe we can get... I've never played Magic. <laughs> Uh, and so that's my goal is I want I'm I'm ju I'm jumping into Magic Arena. I keep hearing good things about Magic Arena. So Apparently I'm gonna really I'm gonna teach myself to play like with the just the digital yeah! game. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just like take over. We're gonna do like five weeks in a row just streaming, <sighs> me playing, learning as like I'm gonna go in with no knowledge. Like play, have played some CC, uh, some CCGs, but no knowledge. Yep. And go in and then. My goal is to then challenge like Elaine or Mark Purvis or someone is, in a live head-to-head -head match. Hook. I like that yeah. hook. So, so that's good. So that's where I'm going. But I got. But I do have to get some help on deck building. Okay. And Mike Merrill's actually helps me. So. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So what other questions do we have uh, in here? Um, oh, who's showing up at Origins? Can we announce that? Are you going to Origins? I am going to Origins. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're not even media training and we let you travel? No, that's after. <laughs> that's after the media after. training. <laughs> yeah. People have let me travel before once or twice. I'm, uh, I'm pretty good at it. Who uh, Who else is going? Do we know? Um, as far as I know, it is Crawford, Jeremy Crawford, Chris heard Perkins. Of him. I've heard of him. Um, Chris Lindsay. I've heard of him. I think Greg Tito. I don't uh, know that guy. Uh, and maybe one other person that I'm and forgetting. You? And me. Um, yeah, so that's the plan right now. Not a bad cast. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and the thing about Origins is that it always seems to fall on uh, the like deadline of a book that we're producing. So all of those people are currently slated to be there, but if the deadlines uh, go against us, then at least uh, Jeremy and myself will have to stay here and actually do work and crank out the books that you guys need and love so much. Uh... Okay. Well, still, though, I mean, even if it was just, like, you and Chris Perkins and Chris Lindsay, I mean, let's be honest, like, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And you I, guys are going to be gaming, right? Like, with the people. I assume so. I've never been to Origins people. before. Oh, so. you know what Origins is? Origins yeah. is amazing. Origins is a lot of game playing. Yeah. Origins is, like, have you ever been to Gen Con? Never. Okay. Well, let me tell you my impression of Gen Con. Okay. You save up all your money in mm -hmm. your vacation time for the mm -hmm. whole year. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, and then for four days, you go and... Buy a bunch of cool gear and swag and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And play games with all your buddies. 
Sounds Origins awesome. is just the second half. Oh, okay, so it's... Got like, it, you got just it. go and you game, game, oh, game, game, really game. Nice. Like, seriously. And the nice part about it is, um, I mean, Gen Con's cool. Gen Con's big. My, my challenge with Gen Con, especially if you try to be, like, on the main floor or whatnot, is it's loud. It's big. There's a lot of people. Right. Origins is that weird thing. Like, I want it to keep growing because I want them to be successful, but I want to keep it small enough. Like, the room that you play in for D&D uh, is big and spacious and carpeted and a little noise damping and we keep the Ooh. tables far enough apart from each other, right? It's this thing where it's like, you know, yeah, it's like this nice that's sweet good. spot where you can game. I mean, that's the thing like at the PAXs and stuff, right? PAX East Gaming for D&D, oh, that's awesome because they got that huge space and it's totally yes. works, but then you go PAX Prime and you're like, oh, crowded it's so up. much. Yeah. Did you happen to go to Unplugged last year, PAX Unplugged? Uh, I did not. It fell over my birthday. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but it has that same, maybe, maybe Origins has the same feeling, but... Unplugged is now my favorite PAX show because it's pretty chill and it's all very, very analog, very few video games. Um, and so the, the, and half of the theater is just packed with people playing games, those tabletop games. You, and there's giant game libraries, you can rent stuff out. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like uh, so you nice. at the Tinku Tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was it was such a good energy. Everybody was so cool. Yeah, I heard good stuff. I um, talked Unplugged I, is awesome. I talked to the PAX guys uh, about it, and obviously they were super happy with the first one. Yeah, and, yeah. And they love it. I mean, and the truth is, I mean, you know Jerry. I mean, like, tabletop gaming is, like, where his heart is. Like, Absolutely. That's, so that's his love child. It definitely is. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Who got the Project Manor Baby Wizard babysitter job? Uh, I will I will announce that uh, later. I've got some emails internally to send to some of the folks who applied internally uh, first, but we will announce that later. Uh, here's a question for you, Kate. Yeah. Uh, if we are going to see Eberron or Spelljammer in fifth edition this year, obnoxiously blink twice. How do I? How do I just blink normally? Did she blink twice? I, I blinked, but not obnoxiously. Was it obnoxious? I think it was. <laughs> Helen, was it obnoxious? Was it? <laughs> okay. So right now, hey, everyone, <laughs> you've heard me say this numerous times. You are not getting Spelljammer this year. It is not happening. Okay. Uh, wait, I didn't say no. And maybe uh, no Eberron either. Well, okay. No Spelljammer. <laughs> uh, France, a French player here. Oh, maybe they're going to be go, at the... Can we give away uh, this, this cool thing real quick? So this is, oh, this is amazing. So she stole this out of my office. This is limited edition, baby. These are... Uh, you don't even have one of those, do you? No! Yeah, this is well before your time. So, all right. God. So let's open the raffle now, uh, and we will give away this awesome beanie. Oh, yeah, that's tight. Oh, you need one of those. You know what? I know! How about this? You keep that one, and yes. we'll give away one more from my private collection. Good. You okay, guys don't so we will give away give one away of the dangerous. beanies. Uh, let's also uh, give away. Uh, let's give away um, four more, or uh, four, two sets of four. Two two more sets of four of the minis, um, and also this is probably good to know. If you win um, a, a raffle thing, if you get a raffle prize today, you will also get. A lovely notebook. Ooh. They're really cool. My favorite part of these, by the way, is I have a bunch of these now. Um, they have graph paper, which I really, really like. Um, and then some of them have like dot paper mixed with lined paper. Um, I Those love ones these. Are all graph. These are all graph papers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you'll get a sticker sheet because everybody needs dinosaurs and the little uh, flying monkeys. And this and, is the Tomb of Annihilation. And by the way, yeah, Chult this is stuff. this is the yeah. Chult stuff. If you guys have not played Tomb of Annihilation yet. A, you should, uh, and B, watch out for these little bastards. These guys suck. <laughs> so we're playing in the we're playing in the game, uh -huh. and, uh, and I play a uh, I play a neutral rogue most of the time. Right. And from time to time, in game he gets bored. Okay. Or in world he gets bored. I'm not saying I'm bored at the table. I mean maybe sometimes. Um, but you know, just things aren't moving quite as much as he would I'd like. It's it just kind of like what's yeah. going on. And so we were out there, and these monkeys were kind of looking down at us, and we were kind of wondering like. Were these some kind of avatars? Is some kind of familiar? Like, oh, were these yeah. guys spying on us from up above or whatnot? And so I'm like, ah, what happens if I shoot one? <laughs> um, I will tell you what happens. What happens? Like a million monkey bites. Like a million <laughs> monkey bites. And you think, you know, like a death by a thousand cuts. Um, yeah. Well, 
it totally, I, I, they were only doing like two, three damage. It was a D4 damage, oh but God. there were so many of them on me. And I think that I even had to make saving throws on some kind of like crazy whatever, you that I almost got, I almost monkeys. got killed by the flying monkeys. <laughs> like I was, and my, and my group did not want to heal me because they oh were like, you God. bastard, why yeah. did you shoot it? And I'm like, I want to see what would happen. So to be fair, what do you think would happen in real life if you shot a monkey? If you shot a monkey, you would die from monkey bites in real life. One monkey? Yeah, because they all come out. You know it. They defend each other. So you could have you could have extrapolated. Okay. You're just a ding dong, is okay, what I'm saying. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> um, also, by the way, since I mentioned my daughter earlier with thing, this is her favorite. Oh, she yeah. She loves the... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I love the six sheets. Okay, so if you get something today, it's going to have extras in it. Uh, and this is one of my favorites. Mini poo poo. Oh, yeah, that's classic. Classic. Lover. How many minis? Um, per box, right? Four sets of two. Two sets of four boxes, two each of which of contain four minis. So six minis. Illuminati confirmed. What does Illuminati confirmed mean? Oh, is that your blinking? Did yeah, you, definitely. You blinked so much. I didn't. I blinked uh, a normal amount. You blinked a normal amount. Uh, Teredrel, Teredel, uh, uh, I'll write the Eberron book if you guys need it. Oh, nice. Oh. Dark Sun, raffle, raffle, raffle. Kate, you should keep that honesty. Okay. I will. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I like that. I will always be honest. Um, can I ask you a question in the form of a statement and feel no pressure because of the fact that I am technically your boss's boss? Yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> um, but uh, is our team not like the greatest? Does it not feel like so family and so cool? And is it not just like, oh my God, we have an amazing team? It really is. It really, really is. I don't. Yeah. This is this is something we've talked about off camera. So I don't feel like this is propaganda. But this team is incredible. They're so kind. They welcomed me with open arms. I've already got like three unflattering nicknames, um, mostly from Rich. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she sits really close to to Richard Witters uh, yeah. and Richie. Um, yeah, he'll he'll dish. <laughs> he he'll does. Dish. He does. But. True story. Now you guys can can take my nickname for Richie because I'll tell you there was one day a couple weeks ago where the whole office just reeked and nobody could figure out what it was and we were just like God, what is that smell? Did someone like burn popcorn and then shove it in a diaper or something? <laughs> Which you know could happen. Yeah, um, that's happened. But, but we found out that Rich had a nasty uh, cup of tea that he he takes his tea with milk and so he had spilled some of it and it had gotten like hidden under a pile of stuff so it was Richie's nasty rotting milk that he eventually like sniffed out and found so now uh, my nickname for him is uh, Stanky Milk um, so he comes by he'll be like hi Evil Kate and I'll be like what's up Stanky Milk and he's like oh man <laughs> <laughs> just beat him at his own game. Seriously. Sometimes it's just stanky. Sometimes it's milk milk. <laughs> milk milk? <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah. Whatever mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Mike tweeted yesterday about how uh, my power move has been making him ask permission to use his desk chair. Um, that is 100% True. <laughs> Making who ask permission? Making Mike ask permission to use his desk chair. Do you keep his desk chair until Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. So what happened was he came over. I was sitting in his desk chair because he sits next to Jeremy, and Jeremy and I have to work together a lot. Yeah. And but Mike, Mike stands Mike, a lot Mike too, uses yeah. a standing desk. And so he came over. His desk was in the standing configuration, and he gave me this dirty look. He's like, can I have my chair, please? And I was like, when you orient your desk into the sitting position, yes, you may have your chair. Like, oh my god. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so ever since then he's come over to my desk, which is not close. He's like, is it okay if I use my chair now? And I'll check and be like, yeah, yeah. It's, in, it's in the proper configuration. So you power move. I did. Okay. Mike Burles is my boss. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, it is actually important, I think, the first day when you get to prison to just pick a fight with the biggest uh, biggest person in the yard. And, yeah. Yeah, so good, good power move. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, but that's just the kind of team we, everybody's, everybody's goofy and accepting, and we all, I think it all comes, it has to come from a place of, ma like, deep, mad respect, or else it doesn't work. So, yeah, um, yeah it does, it feels like a family, and we're all, we're all kind of picking on each other. I mean, I, I think the other thing, too, right, is, I mean, like, everyone loves what we're doing. They're all, we're all geeks in our own right. Uh, not everyone on the team plays D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say most of them are gamers. Uh, not all of them, but... 
uh, but they all just the love and the, uh, the place in the heart that I have for the brand. I mean, I think that we take it very seriously that we're brand stewards. Exactly, um, exactly. So I think having that goal and that focus is great. Uh, and I worked in, you know, worked in video games almost my whole life. This is the first time I came to, um, to what, you know, commonly gets referred to around here as analog or whatnot, mm -hmm. although uh, that's, that was confusing for me in the beginning. So I kind of was expecting maybe that it would be different, but I mean, this is like every other game studio that I've ever been to uh, in terms of the major dynamics and stuff, but this team is not like every other team that I've been on. Agreed. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we, had, um, we have a new person joining, and when I was um, talking to him, he and I had shared some past work stuff, uh, and I said, and on our team, I go, there's no like weird thing between like development and marketing, you know what I mean? Like That's the dev true. team marketing yeah. is not, there's no anything. That's true. That's actually super huge because uh, marketing is usually the realm of the publisher, right? Yeah. And they're so, in video games, they're so other. Yeah. Like, so often they have a reputation, deserved or not, that they come in and destroy the creative energy of the development team and they quash all their goals and it's all about business and everything, but that is that is not my experience whatsoever with the, the marketing and business side of D&D. Like, yeah. everybody has the exact same goals. Yeah. And I've been shocked if I'm like, hey, I have this wacky idea, um, and they're like, yeah, let's do that. That yeah. sounds great. Let's like, do it's, that. It's, it's such a, we are brand stewards, but also trying to make the game more accessible and open it up to so many other yeah. people and, and give people the way that they want to like represent their love for this game, um, give them more chances to yeah. do that, which is really cool. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I always feel honored. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, too. setting you up for that one, but obviously yeah. I know you feel the same way. Whew. Yeah, That's exactly. Thank you. Uh, is this Watsy Propaganda Chat? Oh, you yes, know it is. Actually. You know it is. Yeah. We were going to rename it, but i got to be honest, I don't know how to spell propaganda. Uh, <laughs> this is full of Kool-Aid. <laughs> yes. Uh, funny, actually, about her mug. Um, so if you uh, hold your mug up, that is from the Space Coast. Uh, yeah, that's and, right. And uh, my, uh, my wife, that's where she's from. Uh, you don't have to zoom in on that, Pelham. They, they can tell. They, they know. We're, we're storytelling. And then the other side has a space shuttle with my name on it. It says, Kate. Aww. It's a little child's mug. <laughs> now, I would not mind if my daughter was a pilot in a space oh, shuttle or a rocket or whatever. I mean, we're not going to be using pilots then. I mean, Elon Musk and everything. I know. But, yeah. Do you know my dad used to train astronauts to fly the space shuttle? That was his job? No kidding. Yeah, that's where my love of space came from. My, my middle name is Europa because dad's such a space nerd. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that sometime if you want. But yeah, he my... might know my in-laws. Really? Yeah. Uh, my mother-in-law um, retired, I want to say about six or seven years ago, whole time at the Space Coast or at the Space Center. Uh, and then um, and then her husband, my father-in-law, he was... Uh, he retired a little bit earlier and started a print shop in Coco, which is right next to oh, right uh, Kennedy on. there. But he was there forever and ever. He has some crazy stories about I don't doubt it. Uh, some of his uh, friends and missions and stuff. And I don't know if you remember that one where the pod actually caught on fire Oof. on the um, uh, tarmac, is what I'll call it or whatnot. Sure. Uh, but it was a design flaw in the way that the door opened because the door opened in and because the fire created a vacuum. Oh, like, no. Yeah, and so it was like really emotional and really sad. And, yeah, and he knew the guy who was out like on the thing trying to open it, oh. and that guy just was like he went into the deepest, darkest pressure because like it was so traumatic. And I'm like, Dude, wow, I can't handle space disasters. I probably should have mentioned that before. Yeah. Like if I if I see some footage of like Columbia or whatever or the Challenger, yeah. I I just I lose it. It ruins. Well, and the one member of the teacher. Huh? <sighs> yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife, my wife was in class with her uh, nephew. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, so they're watching that together live. You know, Jesus, yeah, it was crazy, right, crazy. Well, I know, new bring, stuff, new stuff. Bring down the mood. Uh, all right, uh, let's. Uh, w wow, wow. Yeah, way wow. to go, Nathan. Let's show a picture of Tito again. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, the Great Space Coaster. <laughs> Negative, Nathan Stewart. Wow, I know, I know. Gosh, I'll stop. I'll stop. Uh, da -da, da -da. Have you ever played a character who was bad at something but really liked doing it? Um, I wanted to make a character like that for a while and kind of have that. Um, the closest thing that I've ever done um, is uh, I've rolled up a true fighter, but I rolled the stats straight. Oh. And I uh, and I had like a nine strength. <laughs> So, I mean, in that way, yes, I, I really, I mean, I was a fighter, so fighting was my thing. Oh, no. Um, but, yeah, but I was super bad. I mean, I think I had, I don't know what it was, like a negative one or something. Oh, no. Like, I just, I was, I was never doing any damage. Like, so, yeah, so I was just this. Was it fun? 
Uh, kind of. Okay. I mean, not to progress as much and everything in it, but it was kind of fun to just embrace your flaws. Sure. You know, and kind of make up for it in other ways. And then you kind of have to role play and talk your way out. Oh, and, yeah. That's so cool. I've done that. that, but I've wanted to play where someone just like has this like, I'm really like, I'm the best at this thing, whatnot. It's like, no, you're really not. You're really, not. really, really you're not. Really not. Yeah. Yeah, but I never, I've never done it like that. Uh, are we expecting Greyhawk? That was a dark topic. Come yeah. in on. Oh yeah, do we sorry, have Corey Hickson. Raffle to brighten the mood. We do. Let's do another raffle. Okay. okay. Um, we will. Uh, okay. So on this one, um, not sure uh, if you've got any painters out there. Um, yeah. But this is kind of fun. So WizKids uh, does the um, the unpainted uh, miniatures, uh, the primed pr uh, and paint ready out of the box. Uh, and these are fun. Uh, this is different than what Gale Force 9 does because you don't have to put these together and kind of sand and glue and, and do the priming and stuff. So this is, you know, probably not for the purest per se, uh, but if you've got a steady hand and, uh, and a good painter, this, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, and this set was, I think, from the Curse of Strahd and the Esmeralda set uh, in terms of the painted uh, version. But obviously, you can paint it any way you want, so, uh, so it's not... Uh, it's not themed anymore, but uh, if you win this, then um, hopefully you're a painter, and if not, then learn to be a painter. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, and also, uh, let's do, if you get that one, you also get this. There we go. We're going to throw in the um, greatest hits, Dungeons & Dragons, Shadows of the Vampire, which, by the Ooh. way, I love, uh, I love Jim Zub. I don't know if you... Uh, no. Yeah, he's awesome. You should definitely follow him on the Twitter. Okay. Um, oh, and then really also we're going to give away uh, the Dungeon Tiles Reincarnated. And, and again, remember, everybody who gets a giveaway also <laughs> uh -huh, gets the stuff. Uh, okay, so that is happening. Um, all right. Uh, this is dope. Whew, that's totally helping with the mood, right? That's very yeah, that's cool. Definitely yeah, helping. yeah. That's definitely helping. Um, all right, so we, oh, we're at our 12. We're at yeah, our we got 12. so much crap to give away still. I know, I know. We got two, two more sets. No, I think we gave away some of those. We gave, we gave away. Did, what do we got? What's up? Should we give away some more minis? Do we have more winners? How, what's our thing? Can, yeah. Yeah, all right, let's do two more sets of four. Um, and then let's close down the raffle so we can have a couple more questions to close it out. We're running over. What are we giving away right now? We've got the unpainted minis. Unpainted um, minis. The uh, unpainted minis with the comic, uh, the dungeon tiles reincarnated, dungeon tiles. and then two more sets of four minis. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and Kate's computer. No, no, not Kate's computer. Uh, they wanted to win Tito's computer one time, or was my computer. I don't know. We were giving um, away everything. I had to fight for a computer that, that actually could run Word and InDesign at the same time. Really? Yeah. Is that hard? <laughs> Apparently. You broke the first two computers, <laughs> I, I heard. Think this is my third one. Yeah, so that's <laughs> And fun. I got one of the new Macs that has, like, the cool intelligent touch strip across there. Oh, that's a Mac? Yeah, dude. Check this out. Like, you can search Google here, and I can uh, enter emojis and stuff when I'm chatting. It's dope. I love it. Oh. This brought to you by... Apple, apparently. Yeah, and no, <laughs> no, really I mean, cool. we, th this is not free. I mean, the company paid for this, so she's, sure did. she's just telling you she likes it. Uh, okay, uh, Kate really is Rosie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've played Rosie now for, um, I think, something like 110 hours cumulatively. 110 years? Uh, yeah, 110 years, oh, an hour per year. Um, and the more I play her, either the more I play her, the more I become like her, or the more I realize she was me the whole time. But what I'm coming to understand is that that's pretty much everybody, especially yeah. in the C team. But I think across all Dungeons and Dragons games, yeah. your character is kind of just because you're you. You can't you can't really not be you, right? You got to inject, especially at the improv. You got to inject yourself. Which does make me have some questions. So uh, you know, one of our big uh, fans and uh, awesome influencers, uh, Joe Manganiello, uh, yeah. plays uh, the Dragonborn Archon a right, lot. Right. Right. And I've played in uh, a lot of home games with him, sure. and uh, almost every home game, he has burnt down somebody's house or tavern or huh. establishment. So, I mean, just like, <laughs> and so if it really is like everyone's a little bit, I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> I can, interesting. I can see it. I yeah. can see it. Yeah. And playing with his brother, Nick, uh, at the table every now and then, is Nick will just be like, let's murder this. And you're like, whoa, whoa, hey. Okay. Ah. Uh, those boys probably have a lot of testosterone. Yes. Uh, so we will let the uh, eye raffle thing um, finish out a little bit. But uh, first of all, I did want to say I saw some people sub during this. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, 
I think people sub more in the beginning of the month, and since I do my um, chats on the first Friday, I see a lot of them, so I think it's like Yeah, you get that like free Twitch Prime. Yeah, if you're not Twitch Prime, dude, give yeah. us give us uh, your Twitch Prime subscriptions. Yeah. It's free if you have Amazon Prime. Sorry this is an ad for Twitch Prime, but it is so cool, and uh, I think that subscribe channels, channels get more of the money from Twitch Prime subscriptions than they do from straight cash. Um, I think they get they get a bigger percentage of the of the money from it. All right, Rosie uh, B Singer talking uh, Just talking contracts. Some, yeah, some business here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, like subscribe and, to Twitch Prime. And Obo just threw some right stuff there. up there. Uh, okay. So, oh yeah, nice. <laughs> See. Uh, okay, so how about this? We're running a little over, but we were just running a VOD after, right? So we're gonna. Um, one. Huh? Not till one. Not till one. Yeah, oh, not right. until one. So we got yeah, nothing. Hours. Yeah, let's uh, get comfy. All right, well then, well, let's do a couple more questions. In uh, right. we're not gonna do any more giveaways. So if you just come for the free swag or the spoilers, um, then uh, you guys can go finish up your work day, have a good Friday. Uh, go hang out with your friends, play some D&D &D tonight. Um, I'm allowed to say that, I think, without even the hashtag Watsy staff. Hashtag uh, love my Watsy job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you want to stick around and uh, ask us a few more questions, let's do it. Let's go a few more questions. So uh, yeah. throw questions in there. Um, yeah. Obviously, Kate doesn't always come on the Friday, so you could direct a lot of your questions towards her if you want. However, I can bring her back any time. Um, she uh, has volunteered. He is volunteered. my boss's boss. To, uh, to join, yeah. Yeah, we got a big hierarchy <laughs> here, too. Yeah, so I pull rank a lot. Uh, I came for the neon light like a I'm mod. So um, oh, nice. Yes, I'm in Buffalo. Buffalo. Buffalo, by the way, has amazing um, Polish food restaurants. Really? Uh, yeah, well, they've got probably all the different things because they've got lots of different neighborhoods, like a German neighborhood and a Polish neighborhood and stuff. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've got some old family friends who are from Buffalo, uh, from the Polish neighborhood, and so I've been there and had some like straight-up amazing Polish food. Are you from New York? Uh, I lived in New York for a little bit. No, okay. I'm from the West Coast. I, um, I was born in a tiny little town called South Bend, Washington, okay. uh, which was an hour away from the town I actually lived in, but the closest hospital. Okay. Uh, and then... Uh, we Don't need your life story. I'm just kidding. No, give me my life story now. <laughs> and then we moved around a lot, uh, and then I did grade school in Southern California. Okay. Um, and then I did, came back up to the coast and did high school. And the little town that I was from in uh, high school is Iwaco, Washington. Okay, Iwaco. 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 Okay, never heard of it. Um, and you know it's tiny and small because um, one time this guy kayaked the Pacific Ocean from Japan to Washington. Yeah. And he lands in the port. And so all the news cameras come down because it's the first time someone like kayaked you know, by themselves across the Pacific Ocean. I didn't know anybody had ever done that. Um, and so the news cameras are there and they're like, we're here live in this tiny fishing village of Iwaco, Oregon. <laughs> and I'm like, tiny Ilwaco, fishing village? And you Oregon? got the state wrong? Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Where's your fact checking? So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's how, um, that's how uh, small my thing is. Uh, Pancake337, question, what monsters would you like to see as pancakes asking for a friend? Oh, man, what monsters? Uh, there is one monster in, in Morty's that I want to see as a pancake. Um, can I show them sure. this monster? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, just don't tell are we anyone. Gonna, are we going to get in trouble? If you get in trouble, just say Mike Merrill said it was okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I Great. do. All right, let me find, yeah. let me find this toy. Um, Uh, so the reason I love this critter is because it is terrifying to behold. Um, is it a beholder? No, oh. no. It is this page right here. Uh, you got to go come in the middle, lean it there. Uh, there we go. Oh, okay. Uh, down, down, down. <gasps> yeah. Okay. This Look is focus a little. This is the gray render. Oh. I absolutely love the gray render because. I don't know if you guys can see the table at the bottom, but this dude is a this is a monstrous creature, and has these this flaw table where uh, it, it has quirks. So it's a large monstrosity, chaotic neutral, and you roll a d12 to figure out what like goofy thing it's and it's very attached to um, to a suitable master, um, and then it has these quirks which are things like whines piteously in the dark or oh. likes to snuggle. <laughs> oh. I love the gray render so much. Uh, I'm I, like the next game I run it's gonna have it's just gonna be full. Everybody's gonna get a pet gray render. I really love this thing. So yeah that's speaking my of next game I can see a good question in here. Kate if you rolled a new character for a stream, uh, what race and class would you go with? 
oh my gosh, I think I would want to try to do something that was completely different from Rosie. So um, I had a really, I had a really good time. I went to the D and D Adventures League game uh, night at Teku Tavern yeah. on Wednesday, and I rolled just a little wizard, a little gnome wizard, and I, I would, I would love to play something with uh, a ton of spell casting ability. Um, very little actual melee combat because Rosie's all melee all the time. Yeah. Um, but somebody who just is super versatile in spellcasting, um, maybe some, maybe maybe something something crazy. Uh, what about you? Well, uh, and this kind of relates to another question there too. Uh, just for fun, I rolled up a Kenku Artificer uh, that I've only played once, uh -huh. uh, and it was fun. It was really role play fun. Like yeah. it was really like accident prone fun. Yes. Really like not doing a bunch of damage, and it can get annoying because if you lean into the part where he can't speak but he can only mimic, so you got to be oh, careful yeah. on that. Um, so I think at the table you gotta make sure you're at a table that's gonna like go with this a little bit, but also awesome. I think you have to be careful in how you do it yeah. uh, in terms of that stuff. But uh, but I want to play him a bit more because I don't normally play spellcasters at all. So I do want to play a wizard at some point or something that's just all spellcasting. I just haven't, so I feel kind of like intimidated by the right. idea. But it is intimidating. Uh, but the artificer gets some different magic type things. So I've got a pouch basically, which I can pull these you know different potions out of right, and stuff right. uh, and do the thing. So I can. I'm more magical than I mean I can't do any damage like my damage is nothing mm -hmm. uh, right but uh, but I can cr I can stir some shit up yes. and I kind of made him knowing the that. group we were going into that we didn't have a real cleric I think someone was running like a blood domain cleric from uh, <laughs> from Critical Role sure. uh, and uh, and so I made him a little bit on the healing side of the the kind of thing but right. his whole okay. backstory. Um, is that he basically longs to fly again? Like you know, he's never flown, uh, oh. but the Kenku, you know, have lost their their ability right. to fly. And so the reason that he became an artificer is because he's trying to just collect enough stuff and knowledge and gain it and build up his skills so that he can actually, you know, artificially basically give himself flight again. So, uh, so on a cute. personal level, outside of the game. Uh, I, ju I just want the, the, the mechanical servant. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. But for, for him, uh, and his name's Poe, uh, oh. uh, for, uh, for, for Poe, uh, he, uh, um, he just longs to, to fly. So that's his whole, his whole mode. So he's only adventuring, basically, just so he can pick up knickknacks and stuff and just build his, his skills and his collection enough to get up to like this master yes. artificer so that he can and fly away and never be seen again. I, no, I don't I think he would bring it back to the Kenko. I think he would I think he would want to oh, bring flight the back technology. to technology. Yeah. He would want to like start forwarding that, like mass producing, doing the stuff and then all Kenku would be flying again Yay. if it was up to him. Like it's not just personally for him. I think he feels like as a race that they've lost something. What a good character. So that's my guy that I rolled up. And to answer one of your guys' questions, um, we uh, I don't know if Artificer is going to win. It's going to be where Kate will actually probably know officially before me. Um, and then the question always comes up is that will the Unearthed Arcana stuff be in uh, D and D Beyond? Uh, and it gets really challenging because the Unearthed Arcana stuff really is meant to play test, and we're trying to get a lot of feedback and make changes and trying to do um, like addition control or version control. Um, if we if we put those out through partners like D and D Beyond and stuff, gets a little tricky. Uh, so I would say that uh, you know we're going to err on the side of, of of not putting the UA stuff out till it's done, um, so that these guys can really work with the fans and twist and tweak and you know and iterate and everything. So that's the general philosophy behind the UA. Uh, Kate, which author who does not presently DM would you most like to have DM a game of D and D for you? Ah, uh, gosh. And related question: Does Patrick Rothfuss DM? Um, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he Are has. Are you sure? I'm sure he has, okay. I should say. Um, but he plays a lot of non-D&D games, too, so yeah. I'm sure he GMs other stuff quite a bit as well. What's a GM? Game master. I've never heard of that. That's a, that's a fake thing. <laughs> Wow, you are you are dedicated to the brand. I'm on brand, baby. I'm on brand. Uh, I, I can never tell when he's fucking with me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Neither can tell. That's one of my traits. Um, authors. Although, actually, can I tell? Uh, can we Please. can we sidebar while for a second? I, while I think. Yeah. Can I can I tell a semi embarrassing slash telling story about that? Yeah. Um, so uh, Kate did not have the best first impression uh, of me. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Because um, when uh, she had her interview day, everyone was like super nice and fuzzy. I mean, they were they were grilling her on on design stuff and tech. 
medical stuff. I got tested. I yeah, got, I, no. I got, I had a pretty brutal disease yeah, test. Yeah, on that, that stuff was pretty brutal or whatnot, but, um, but I was the only one who came in and, like, grilled you. Uh, and like did and like was trying to like dig in and find out like what what you weren't telling is like I mean I came in you know uh, as a man on mission and I didn't I knew that I you know wasn't like the warm and fuzzy or whatnot but then after she had gotten hired you know not in these exact terms but she was like yeah I kind of thought you were an a hole in the interview and I'm like and now and I think her exact words were yeah less. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's two reasons. Oh, no. um, two reasons. Uh, number one, confidence. Because <laughs> the job uh, of an interview is to is to find out the stuff uh, before they get in, right? I mean, when when you take this job, you make a big commitment to us. When we hire you, right. you know, we make a big commitment to you. And you know, I mean, we're going to be BFFs forever now, uh, right? So the the interview is really important to kind of pull yeah. up. And then secondly, I was a uh, I took actual interview classes in college, uh, and then I worked at Microsoft for that's where I learned how to be a people manager. Right. And so I actually had four or five different rounds of interviewing and uh, uh, different stuff on that in terms of how to hire quality, talented people and stuff. So I take that part really, but like that's my design chops. Like I'm not a designer, my my trained skill is uh, is interviewing and, and rhetoric. Well, um, I am embarrassed that you told that story because I uh, look like a total punk. Oh! Um, but no, it's it's a uh, it's fine. I liked I liked it very much because it kept me on my toes. But by the end of it, I was like, "There's no way I got this job because Nathan." <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Nathan comes in, and this is the last interview of my day. It's a whole day of interviewing. Um, and so I was like, I felt pretty good. I, I felt like the rest of the day had been collaborating with nerds, trying to solve hypothetical design problems, and which is what I've done my whole career. So it was just awesome. It was really fun. <laughs> Nathan comes in, sits down. He like tosses his business card across the table. He's like, so, Rosie B. Stinger, what's that about? I was like... Damn! <laughs> was, wow! It was so scary! Wow! Uh, I was like, yeah, and I, I was like, wow, this guy <laughs> hates me. Hates me! <laughs> yeah. uh, and it was an hour of that, I was sweating bullets. Yeah. And you and I uh, had an argument, too. You were, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it vividly. I remember it vividly. Um, it was a, I, I had said something, you were talking about D&D as like a family of products that are, include the game, but also include the novels and uh, televised versions of yeah, them yeah. and all that. Yeah, the world. The world of D&D. &D. Yeah. And I said something like, I don't feel like D&D &D feels like D&D, &D, especially if you try to convert it to a video game or something. I don't think it feels like D&D &D unless you have a DM, unless you have true improvisation and someone who is, who is contorting the game around the things that you do. And you were like, why? And then you, <laughs> then you drew this continuum on the whiteboard. You were like, here's this, and here's this, and here's what a DM is, but this is all Dungeons and Dragons. And I was like, yeah, okay. And then you turned to me and you were like, don't agree with everything I say. <laughs> wow. You like, argue with me. And I was like, okay. Wow. I've never argued in an interview before, but I guess this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. You opened this can of worms. I did. Oh, it's my so God. good. I love this it. Is, but it was, it was spirited. But yeah. I definitely came. That was the last interview of the day, and then I left. And I was like, yeah, I didn't get that job. I really wish I'd gotten that job. And the irony is I left that interview and I said, so Mike, you're hiring her, right? <laughs> so, you know, kind of we crossed in the night. Yeah, it was a great interview. It was really good. Good, I'm really yeah. glad. I think, I, if you, um, I think if you walk out of an interview unchallenged and completely uh, sure of yourself, one of two things is happening. A, they were way too easy on you and you guys didn't get into some real stuff. Right. And that's fine, that happens. Uh, or B, you were confident and arrogant and you didn't get the job because you were too confident and arrogant. I mean, yeah. I've had some of those interviews. For sure. Me Before too. Wizards, I, I interviewed one place and I was uh, I was not looking for a job. I was just actually wanting to keep my interview skills sharp. Nice. Uh, and so I went in with Wasting like zero. Wasting everybody's time. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Well, they cool. called me. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. Okay. I didn't apply for it. They called me oh, and okay. they're like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure, let's do this. Uh, and like it was so old that they were going to fly me in um, for the interview. Mm -hmm. um, but my thing was on record for like years before and I actually was living in the city that they were in and I'm like, no, I live here now. And they're like, oh, we should update our thing, right? So I lived, it was not an applied for job. Weird, okay. And so, uh, but I took the interview because I'm like, yeah, no, no, I want to I keep my skills sharp and uh, and I rocked the interview except for my arrogance and cockiness was so far through the roof that they were just like, no, skillfully this guy is probably struggling <laughs> not, but this guy is an a-hole. Wow, did they yeah. give you that feedback? 
No, but I, I know. I oh, knew. Okay. Like, I walked out going, oh, wow, I took that way too far. Like, because <laughs> it was funny, because you never go into an interview with so much bravado, and it was really empowering and nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, I mean, you got to, you know, if you're applying in place or whatnot, I mean, there's a sense of humility and, and humbleness that you should be taking in, and I, and I didn't. Uh, and so, therefore, yeah, I walked out just going, oh, I totally rocked that interview. Oh, wow, I totally didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just was like, you know, I hit every question answered 110%. I asked them questions. Like, yeah, it was, you know, too much. And they, too didn't, much. they didn't offer you a job? They did not no. offer me the job. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I walked out of there at first thinking, nailed it, and then I'm like, oh, wait, no, I totally messed that yeah. up. Yeah. So the answer to the question, I've been thinking about it while we've been talking. Um, what author who does not currently DM would I want DMing for me? And unfortunately, she is dead. So she cannot DM for me, but it would be Marion Zimmer Bradley, who wrote The Mist of Avalon, which was, I think, the first fantasy book that I ever really fell in love with when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's this wonderful feminist look at um, King Arthur and, and Morgan Le Fay and everything, uh, and it was, I think I was 15 when I read it for the first time, and I fell in love with druids, and I started studying. I would, like, buy the two books at Barnes & Noble that it had, like, in the Wicca section, they would have yeah. ones about druidry, and so I'd buy them and read the, all about, like, the modern practices of druidry and everything, and I tried, I tried to practice it, but once I realized I wasn't actually going to be able to shapeshift into a dolphin, uh, I gave up my religious uh, fervor pretty quickly. So, wait, you can't turn into a dolphin? Uh, yeah, is that a deal breaker? <laughs> well, I kind of wish that would have come up in the interview. Obviously, I didn't, uh, I didn't grill you hard enough. You didn't ask the right questions. <laughs> yeah, see, and that's why, right? And I don't get the opportunity to interview you again. <laughs> Um, oh my god. Okay, so we are pretty far over. Uh, so true. let's do this. Oh wow. Am I that bald? Yeah. Oh no it's shit. It's shiny up there. Yeah. Huh. But it's nice. Yeah. It works for you. Alright, as long as I'm rocking it. Um, all right, well, I've accidentally gone out of chat, so let's do this, though. Let's have one really good question. Uh, yeah, that's you guys. You guys got to ask the really good yeah, question. No, pick no a pressure. hard one. Pick something that maybe we can get in there. I'll, I'll give Kate some permission to maybe even spoil. I don't know, but let, oh, let's see what you got. So, Kate, yeah. look, look and see, because I'm, I'm out okay. of the questions. I'm now just sh staring at my shiny head. And are we done with giveaways? Are we done with? We're done with giveaways. Okay. We're gonna, okay. We'll do more giveaways next time. Okay. Um, Ooh. Uh, this one is, uh, people keep asking what I'm going to work on next, um, oh. which is a pretty good one if you want, depending on how much you want to spoil, because I am working on a variety of products right now. Yes, I don't want to spoil that, but I will tell you guys that, uh, that I know one of the projects Kate is working on is pretty far away. It's actually uh, a spring 2019 project, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I will just tell you, I am super Excited? Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 in my wheelhouse. That's, Excellent. Yeah, so we're not going to spoil that one. Um, but um, I, I think we settled on a title yesterday. Do you want to see? I'm not going to show them, but. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to oh. see? Oh. Hang on. You just, you just like teasing the audience here. This yeah, is dude. awesome. Yeah. You're like, you might be my regular co host <laughs> now. Yeah, this might be, uh, you know, fireside chat with. Uh... What do you think? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Where'd that, that art sick? come from? Shauna just comped it up for us. Bullshit. Yeah, no, she just she just threw it together. No, oh, you guys, you guys are. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry that we're not allowed to share that yet. But when we do, I tell you what, we have a we have a uh, date is the wrong word. We have a um, an appointment for that when we do share this. Yeah. It'll be here on the fireside chat with you yes. and me. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. that'll be our announcement. So this is a tease for content that you will receive from us. Yes. Someday. But it is, it is extremely dope. And this is the first book that I believe Jeremy has told me I will be lead designer on for this, for this really? book. Really? Yeah, yeah. Either that or managing editor. I can't remember. I don't know what the difference is. So. I don't actually think there is one. But I, I mean, functionally, I think, I think there's, a, there's a lot of game design and editing in yeah. either of those roles. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff together, though, too, and stuff. So, I mean, it's kind of they all blend together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I think Jeremy technically is sometimes the editor or whatnot, but at the same time, he's lead design. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, and then, um, what else? Uh, the other thing, are you working at all on this year's uh, fall stuff? Have oh, you yeah. been involved at all? Oh, yeah. Have you done any playtesting? No. No. I haven't done any playtesting. I've been working largely as um, editorial. Editorial. On a lot, a lot of them on one, a little bit on the other, and then not at all on the third that I can think of. Um, but I've been involved with all three of them to some degree. Now, are you... Um, 
you have any travel plans this summer to maybe go to any events where we might announce and share all the, the juicy details? I feel like there's something. Did that's you get your travel card? In, no, the website's broken. I said the thing to IT, but I haven't heard about it. The entire it. website's broken? No, when you finish the credit card application process, it says like 401 error. So I screenshotted that and said, yo, TS, fix this shit. And I haven't heard anything back. Okay. Blast. Put you on blast, tech services. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, are you uh, are you planning to go to San Jose in October? Uh, for I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yes. What? I don't know. I don't you know. don't know San Jose in I don't October? Know. I don't know what's in San Jose in October. Oh. I guess I Audience, do you guys know what's in San Jose uh, in October? Uh, dun, 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 dun. I am going to Pax Australia in Are you? October. So yeah, yeah. What's the dates on that? I think it's the last week of October. Oh, that's not going to work well for me. Oh no. Uh, did you get that approved by your manager? <laughs> um, um, no, I didn't. Okay, we'll have to talk about. Oh, oh, Phoenix Rising knows TwitchCon, TwitchCon. Oh, TwitchCon. Yeah. Am I going to TwitchCon? I think that it would be appropriate. I see. Mm. All right. Well, I guess mm. we'll, have a, we'll have an off-screen conversation. We'll have an off-screen conversation. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I will do this. I will uh, tell you guys that we have lots and lots of cool stuff that we uh, like to announce and share. And as you guys know, uh, and as you especially know now, we got a lot of stuff in the hopper. We're working pretty far out there. We've got a lot of exciting stuff. We like to let it bake until it's ready to come out of the oven and not share it too soon unless I spoil it. And then that's my... Uh, prerogative because uh, that's fun, <laughs> uh, but uh, but so we're gonna you know you guys asked a lot of great questions and most the answers to the questions are I don't know we have some stuff in the hopper let's see he's, but he spoiled so much shit on this show today that he hasn't he's not supposed to he doesn't even know so but there's always more there's always more we there's got cool more. stuff so we got so much exciting stuff so uh, so if you come back every first Friday uh, we do the fireside chats uh, it's 11 a.m. our time we live in the Pacific Coast here and. Uh, I live in Seattle, Washington. Where do you live? Um, I live in Seattle, Washington. Nice, but we work out of Renton, off, uh, Renton Washington. Uh, and fun fact for you guys, the reason we're in Renton is because uh, Watsi started, um, you know, with, uh, um, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, Richard Garfield and... Uh, I only know Garf off the top of my head. No, no, the actual guy, Peter. Uh, Peter Atkinson, yes. uh, and uh, and so uh, I want to say that one or both of them uh, worked for Boeing or you know engineers and uh, and thing, and so they had the roots down here because of Boeing and whatnot. And right. when we started Wizards, it was down here, and then once you set up shop, you just kind of grow and grow. And now, like moving, it would be like this big pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a bit of a drive for me, but it's worth it because you guys are. What awesome. part of Seattle are you in? Over by UW. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a that's a hike. Yeah, it's not, not great. Yeah. yeah, got a couple bottlenecks there too. The Mont Lake yeah, Monster. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Columbia City, so it's oh, just you're like 20, 20 oh, minutes. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, but yeah, so come back every first Friday down here. Uh, I think that we've got our, yeah, our a at Kate Welch uh, and uh, at Nathan B. Stewart there. Uh, so if you uh, if you follow us, uh, I do spoil a lot of stuff on there. I'd like to show pictures. Uh, I like to show new products. I steal them off Hillary's desk if they're from partners. I steal them off Jeremy's <laughs> desk if they're from us. So that happens a lot. Um, and then, uh, and then yeah, uh, we like to do the fireside chats. One of my favorite part about this job is that we get to uh, talk directly to the people. It's really cool. Um, and ask, uh, have real questions asked, give real answers. This one is a little bit less Q&A, a little bit more having fun with you. I thought the uh, uh, the little image uh, uh, hike was fun, especially the uh, the taxi. Uh, I can't wait to see this resume thing that you put together. Yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, come back and, and join us if you, uh, if you uh, want to subscribe. That's totally cool. We appreciate that. Uh, if you just want to buy our products and run great D&D games and bring more fans into the hobby, I'm... <laughs> I'm cool with that too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, come back and join us. And Kate, thank you so much thank for playing you for with me. me. Sorry I ran so far over. What a good, what a good chat you have too. You guys, yeah. you guys have been incredible. This yeah. is a good, this is a good group. I know we got good fans. Yeah, we, we do. Good fans. We do. Uh, and I got great employees. And I got to be honest, uh, Kate has been a wonderful addition with her two months and one day. She feels like part of the family already. And, Yay! Um, it's been great, and we got her working on a lot of stuff, which means we have more stuff coming out next so year than we have stuff. this year. So um, so uh, keep on joining back. And as always, thank you, Pelham. Thank you very much Yay, for running. Yay, Pelham! Uh, 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 brown, 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 brown. <laughs> <laughs>
And also, <laughs> I probably like should uh, preemptively thank Jeremy a little too. Is Jeremy going to be uh, helping? With? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to preemptively thank Jeremy because he's going to get a bunch of this stuff sent out to you guys. Um, so uh, I will do the housekeeping here and say, is it a whisper or is it a direct message or how do we do that? Whispers. Okay, so if you won something, you're going to get a whisper, and that's where you share addresses and um, social security numbers, credit card numbers, uh, uh, and uh, date of birth. Um, and uh, do that in the whisper with us so that uh, we can fund uh, Pelham's uh, um, side biz. Uh, and so we can send you all the stuff that, uh, if you want. Um, and as always, thank you guys for watching and being fans. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And we are out in five. Four, now, when are we out?